friends! Welcome to Rhea Creates. My name is Rhea. I will be your host today on this S-Bend Edwardian corset journey. <laughs> I filmed this footage way back when, when a lot of things were happening in my life and I was also 40 pounds heavier. I got this pattern from a corset maker on Etsy and I will link her stuff below. She's really amazing and this pattern was really easy to work with. There's only a few things I would actually change to make it even easier to work with, but she does extant examples of corsets and she makes patterns from them and I think it's amazing and this is my first S-Bend and I absolutely recommend using her stuff. She's amazing, great altier, love it so much. So when you're working with a corset pattern, I always recommend doing a mock-up. This is cotton canvas and it works out great for me. And it does have some slight stretch, but you know, it's it's a throwaway pattern when you're done, but you will have an adjusted pattern. So here I am just sewing it up. I'm sorry I didn't get any footage of me like, you know, drawing all over myself on this thing. So, cause like I obviously have to sit down <laughs> and I couldn't with this pattern. So it was definitely a learning curve, but this corset is 100% made for me, except when I lost 40 pounds. <laughs> so, I found this silver silk that I had in my stash, which is kind of interesting, and I had just enough to do a one layer corset, which is fine because I didn't want to wear a lot of layers against my body. So underneath of this is actual cotille, which I had left over from grad school, and you know, cotille is like amazing and very, 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 very expensive. It's a herringbone weave. and. Um, you know, I adjusted my pattern, I redrew all my pattern pieces, and this is just me making sure I get all of my lines right. I've already added seam allowances and things like that. And the back, I was actually able to take in two inches, but my corset is still entirely too big for me, which, you know, I'm not gonna rip out all the hardware and start all over again because this was a long process for me to make already. And corset making is a challenge, especially S-Bends. There are so many curves in this and, and like a dart and I was struggling like hardcore. Like I didn't expect it to be so drastic, honestly. But when you had a pattern and you had to adjust it from like, I think it was like a 24 or 26 inch waist up to a 32, that's definitely a challenge. And I'm kind of happy I lost some weight, but you know, my, my natural measurements, you know, this corset is comfortable to wear. Like I could probably tie my shoes. So here I am having the good old pin through corset and silk struggle. And with the silk being so thin, um, it definitely was a challenge to work with because you're worried about like prickles and things like that. And like your pins hitting the, the, the weave and weft of, of everything. And I didn't realize that this silk starts to curl after you cut it. It straight up curls up on you. There's there's no getting around it. You can't beat it with an iron, like nothing. So the way I combated this whole situation was having to treat each piece individually with some very, very small stitches. <laughs> like I ran these through the machine and I treated them all as one piece eventually, but I had to do that times two because you have one side of a corset. And then you have the other side of the corset. Like you can't have just one half of a corset and expect it to still be a corset. Um, as for life things, um, I have, I'm about almost six weeks post-op. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with anesthesia when I came out of it, but you know, I'm fine. The VA took care of me, thank goodness. And if you're new here to this channel, understand that I am a veteran and I'm heavily tattooed and I've been all over the world, which is interesting. So I, I served in the armed forces and I had a good time and hopefully my tattoos aren't offensive to anyone, but I got them when I was very, very young. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, so I'm getting ready to start seam treating all of these and then double checking to see if I messed up because like, why is there a line there? Like, oh yeah, you know, I totally missed cutting that out actually. So now I'm just stacking all the pieces together and cutting it all like that little line, make sure it all stays as even as possible. But corsets are generally not very even in general. Um, so here I am, like I said, treating all of those seams, all those pieces, individual pieces as one piece so I can make sure that they stay down. Now this busk isn't quite as tall or as, I should say as long as I would like it. Um, but I have a lot of like random bits of things in my studio that I don't want to throw away. And, uh, 
sometimes I'll recycle corsets. And this was just one of those things that wasn't recycled exactly, but it was like an extra. So I'm going ahead and, and getting ready to set the front of the busk. And busks also are, are tricky little buggers. And you have to be very, very careful about how you kind of settle them all in all at once. And um, definitely, definitely a thing. It's not my first rodeo with corsets, but my first S-Bend rodeo, absolutely. So we press these seams as my one of my favorite TikTokers say, nice, beautiful, and flat. I love watching his work so much. He's stunning. And so now I'm just checking to see about everything. And I do believe I ended up surging one edge so I could make sure that it, it stayed safe. And I put the other side of the busk in so I could pull those points out and make sure I had as straight of the line as possible because you have to really cement that sucker. And this is a two layer corset. So you don't really get any reinforcement so that's why there's actual reinforcement there and uh, those little clips absolutely you can get them at madamso.com and they're amazing and the, the heat pen and this all you can get at joann's absolutely recommend i got a new one that was made by my friend and he does like beautiful hand turned pens and awls and seam rippers and i was just ecstatic that all and seam ripper the seam ripper in particular considering i mess up often <laughs> is worth its weight in gold. Absolutely. So I'm drawing the other side of the line to set the busk in, and then I'll start working on individual sides, I suppose. But um, this was really, really tricky. So setting these gores in, I would have gone, I probably would have done this into two different pieces. I would have cut a line straight down from the, the point of these gores because mine kind of look like a U shape versus a straight line, like a beautiful cup and had to reinforce those too. But as always clip your seams and your curves because you won't be able to get your curves to lay flat and beautiful if you don't do this. So this is just gonna show you how it opens up and reduces the bulk on those curves. And uh, yeah, you know, little tricks and tips you, you pick up along the way. Um, absolutely. But I was honestly really nervous about like this fitting correctly and you know, camera fail right there. Everybody just comes for the commentary. Come on now. <laughs> but the goal is we have made a new video for the new year. Like that was my new year's resolution. I do recall from the last video that I was, I was putting out. I just had some life things that happened and, um, I'm currently in the process of well, I fixed the sewer line in my bathroom and I am in the process of retiling. So that was a lot of jackhammering and digging because sometimes you don't want to pay $7,000 <laughs> for someone else to do it. Sometimes you just got to get in there and get it done, <laughs> which is what I did because, you know, I'm a single mom now and, um, you know, it didn't get fixed during my marriage. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Be strong, be positive, be tough. You can do it, I promise. So I didn't have enough, uh, wide enough twill tape. So I have this very thin, like quarter of an inch twill tape, which is great because twill tape doesn't like, it doesn't stretch, but this is what I decided to use for my boning channel. I have a lot of this stuff. And like I said, you know, you just gotta make it work. And this is this is how I'm, I'm making it work. And it did, it did do the job, I can say, 100%. I kind of wish I used white instead of black. I couldn't find my white. I, my studio was trashed after grad school. I actually had to have a friend come in and help me put it all back together and like organize it. Cause you know, sometimes when chaos happens, you, you need to fix those things. So I'm using a mixture of spring steel boning and spiral steel boning. And the difference is, is one is very, very bendy which is a spiral steel and the spring steel is very, very like rigid. I wouldn't say that it quite mimics whalebone and I have whale synthetic whalebone um, because it doesn't like exactly heat up to your body and form, but also S bends are also weird. You kind of need them to bend like conform, like almost like, like suction cup to your body. And this presses as I get all my one fourth tips from Lasis or corsetsupplies.com and um, I have this cute little press I actually got from Laces which helps me do my corsets because I didn't want to sit there and fuss with like glue or try to double plier these things like every method you can think of like 
trimming the edges and then plasti dipping them or filing them down to kind of make them do the job. Like, no, just get yourself a press, get yourself these one fourth inch U-tips and have at it. It will save you so much time, but you will be kind of sore. Like making a corset is, is it's exercise. It is 100% exercise. Like just do it in chunks. That's what I would recommend. Oh, and there's a soda that I haven't had in the last five months because no more soda for me. Thank you, missing gallbladder. And I'm here I am shoving boning through the boning channels and, and hoping I get it right. And it's it's a little tricky, but it can be done. I was having more trouble with the herringbone, like the ends of the herringbone, because that does fray. And I like really, really kind of had to wiggle them in there. But and like this is the back of the corset, which is ironically missing in the corset that you see in the very beginning of this video is because I had to literally take off two inches on each side of this corset. I'm tiny now, like not unhealthy. I, the doctors have definitely keep coming me in for checkups, you know, having me come in for checkups. Sorry, dyslexia brain. It's out there now on the internet. Oh no. Don't tell them that you're weird because they'll know. <laughs> and um, I think I was trying to get a close up of how I, I did this, but camera angles and me, you know, and this table, it's just not working, but it's the space that I could make available because all of my other available surfaces were just cluttered with things and I'm much better about it now. But when life gets stressful, sometimes you just gotta make a mess and then have friends help you clean it up because life is messy. <laughs> um, those little red pliers are actually bone cutters and um, they will definitely take off a pinky toe. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, I did not think about that at all. Actually, totally did. I totally did. Would never, but you know, sometimes you gotta strike the fear of God in people. Just kidding. Um, so definitely trying to get these into the boning channels and my adorable cat who is helping. She's helping. And there's a tool out there I kind of want to get to help make eyelets a lot easier to do, but definitely not. And I wanted to give this a try on before I bound it up to see if I like had to literally take this entire thing apart to fix it. But here we go. And I'm just using a lot of stuff left over from grad school. And my cat, who is helping, she thinks she's being cute. And this floor eventually will one day turn into wooden floors, which will be great because I'm tired of stepping on pins. It's like a landmine sometimes. Just, you have to be very, very careful. And I have these magnetic, these magnetic um, pin cushions, which are awesome. And like, just kind of like use them as a minesweeper. Just sweeping through. And I do have a hole punch. Like I have like a press that can punch holes. And I don't know why I decided to do this with my by hand, but I think it was because my grommets were the wrong size for my, my press. But you know, maybe the next time I decide to go full out and make a corset, cause I wear my corsets out. Cause I generally make one for each era. And when I do that, like I will just continue using them as foundation garments for every garment that I have. I definitely could have purchased a corset from, you know, all the top historical makers like Red Threaded, but you know, I don't have the money for that, first of all. And secondly, I'm fixing my house. And thirdly, you know, yeah, convenience is nice, but I got skills. I can do this. I did this. Heck yeah. You know, what's the, what's the point of having, you know, an education and all of this if you you literally can't not <laughs> like there's laziness and then there's effort and you know I don't particularly like making historical underwear but the reason why I do is so I have it on hand so like the next wild crazy idea that I get going on I'll just go for it <laughs> I'll just do the thing and be like okay well I've saved myself some money by not having to make a new one and you know no one's gonna see it anyway except you know the entire internet you guys seeing me in my underwear my historical underwear <laughs> let's keep that out there so now i'm just going ahead and setting grommets and it's it's a one at a time thing your hand will hurt your arm will hurt everything will hurt and sitting on the floor i don't recommend doing this sitting on the floor 
But, you know, I started costuming from the floor up, literally. Like, I didn't have a cutting table. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't think anybody who starts a costuming journey and gets serious about it really starts at a table. Maybe it's just me. Because sometimes you got eight meters of skirt and you want to cut it all in one continuous piece. I mean, have I done that? Yes, I have. I've definitely done that. So I'm here finishing up these grommets. I'm very, very excited and just getting it over with and just happy, like last one, yay, done. Oh my gosh. And now I'm lacing this corset up with a continuous length of, of, um, oh, I shouldn't say continuous. I should, I should say two continuous lengths of thread here and doing every other. Cause you know, I'm about expedient, expediency, I should say, like, what makes more sense in my engineer brain? That does. Seriously, look at you. Look at you. You're you're adorable, but like you're not helping the situation. This we have to punch holes on the floor because this is this is it. You're not going to like it. Ugh, what am I going to do with you? <laughs>